<laughs> Hi guys, tea again. welcome back, drinking tea again. Good morning, if mm -hmm. you're watching this in the afternoon or the evening, it's still good morning, because it's morning when I'm doing it. <laughs> right, um, if you watched yesterday's one, the old chucks, okay, then you'll know what I'm talking about now. If you haven't watched it and you don't know what I'm talking about, then go back and watch it. Yeah. Simple as that, that's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> right. Um, I did say to you about, like, if you're going to give that a go, and I hope you really hope you do, it's, it's, it's brilliant, and you want to make little pendants. As I said, I, I preparing the wood is what I just want to talk to you a little bit about. Now, I said yesterday I cut these off. I have a piece of cherry, um, not a piece of yew. I find fantastic for end grain work. Um, just a log, turn it down, 55 mil, then take them off with a parting tool, and I 10 mil thick, and I end up with all these, okay? But... Um, if you haven't got you and you want to use other stuff, I've got some here that I've got, I'm going to be doing. Um, these ones are Spalted Beach, okay, and these ones are Cherry Almond, mm -hmm. okay, lovely grain patterns. Now, some of the woods, like especially this Spalted Beach, I would not do that end grain, okay. You want to do it bowl orientation, you want it on face, face, plate, face work. So in other words, this is this is the bit of cherry almond, okay? So don't cut them across there because what you'll find, if you want to test it, cut a square off and get it and, and see what it's like, see what strength it's got there. Because a lot of time, because you're you're gonna curve these, you'll find it's it's too weak, the end grain, and they'll break on you, especially when you drill the hole and things, it'll break. You don't want to get to that point, put it in your chuck, drill it, and it, it breaks. So for that, you're better with side grain. So all I do is a two and a half inch block, put it on my bandsaw, and I just push it through, cut it down 10 mil thick, all right? Cut all the strips, and then I set my guide for it, and then I cut it that way, so I get squares, okay? All these squares. And now obviously we wanna make these round, so they fit in our chuck. And if we're making them all the same size, 55 mil. So I'm just gonna show you how I turn these to round okay um i've got some squares here so how I, a lot of time i do i've got a couple of um life centers that i've taken apart they were these ones they're only cheapy ones i've got them off ebay you get like you've probably seen them these big ones uh i can't remember how much they were i bought four of them and oh they're as noisy as hell they're they're rubbish they are they really are they squeal at times they vibrate you get vibration they're horrible but for little jobs like holding on box lids when you want to finish off and things like that and you don't want to mark them, I took them off. You've got lovely big bearings in there and I made these little wooden ones to go over. So they're like soft touch. And if you're doing something where you come in, you might hit the, the live centre. Don't matter because it's just wood. So that's what I did. But this is, we're doing this Dickinson's way, cheap as chips. <laughs> so we ain't going to do that because you're not going to have to go and buy a live centre and take it apart. You'll have a live center, okay? You'll have one of these already, yeah? So all you need to do, get yourself a piece of wood, measure that, and drill a hole inside it like that, okay? Life center goes in, that just fits over the top, and there you go, okay? In my chuck, I've got a piece of, um, this is actually a piece of U, that's 55 mil. This end is 55 mil, okay? And then all we have to do, we bring this up, we set that there. I've I've actually glued a little bit of sandpaper on the end of mine here. Reason being, when you've done about 50 or 60 of these, your wood tends to start to be getting a little bit slippery on there. And if they start to spit, they make hell of a noise, or they burn, or whatever. So a little bit of sandpaper just stops that happening. It doesn't mark the wood. You're going to turn the front of these anyway. Okay. So all you've got to do, bring your tail, your tail stock up, so you've got about an inch gap or so. Okay. Drop your piece in, tighten up, just check it on both sides. Make sure you're overhanging all round. Yeah. That's it. A little tight. That's it. It's friction. It's just a friction drive. Now we just turn it down to the thickness of this wood, okay? So when we get down to that final cut, and I'm gonna use it now, chisel. Do not use your roughing gouge on this. 
as tempting as it may be, because this is bowl orientation. So it's the same as if you was turning. That is, it's exactly the same as that, okay? You do not want to use a roughing gouge on the outside of a bowl. You don't want to use it on these. It's not that you're going to get a catch. It's going to break your tang or any of that rubbish. It's none of that. What it is, it as soon as you hit that corner, it will just break that off. And you'll end up with them having bits missing and everything or cracks and stuff like that. So for this, you really want a spindle gouge or a bowl gouge. Okay. I'm just going to use my bowl gouge. When you attack it, come in at the side. When you get to your final cut, Put your bevel on the wood you can put it on this side or that side and just take that final pass and that will be your thickness okay i'll show you because i'm going to turn these now i'm just going to bring you in <laughs> so we just come across there nice and gentle take your time don't be in any rush There we go guys, and you don't have to move your tail stock or anything, just undo that, take that one out, there it is, okay, and then we pop our next one in, like so, tighten up, just make sure it's overhanging both sides, you'll get good at doing that anyway, start up. guys right and there's one of our shrimp maple and one of those and they'll all be that that size okay now when you get i'm not even going to show you because you're i'm talking to a lot of time i think i'm talking to new turners here when you get really good you'll have it there you won't even stop your lathe you'll just take your towel stock off take that out get another one drop it down, put it there, come in, let go, and it'll start spinning, okay? And you'll just do that. That's when you've got to get two or 300 of these done in a day, okay? You're not you're not gonna be at that stage. And then, like I say, with your bit, okay, pop that off, comes off as easy as that, goes or comes off as easy as that, put that with your chucks, that's all part of your- Pendant making. Pendant making stuff, okay? But that, Looks fantastic if you do your boxes and you've got to hold a lid on, you want just that bit of pressure, just make one up that fits over your, your cone center. They fit over the top. Don't have to be over tight because as long as you've got your little little hole in the center where that, that goes, it will always line up and there you go. You can just pop them on and off when you need it. You've got soft drive. You can make loads of them up. You can taper it down if you want it thin and tapered. Because put that in your chuck, taper it off, put it back on there, and it's all done. There you go. All these tips. tips. I know, tips. Right, okay, and guys. All, all for free. <laughs> That's. <laughs> and you're going to throw the camera I'm around there. Kick you're going to the beat them up for it, are you? <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. So that's how we get all these made, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, um, as I said before, if, you've, if you're going to go into doing loads of this sort of stuff. Perfectly honest, I mean, those those chucks I've shown you, those wooden ones, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Do the job, right? You won't have to worry about changing anything there, do the job, you make loads of those. But I mean, I do, I don't turn as many now. I've, I've got a, a lady, she normally contacts me once or twice a year. She has like 300 or something, two, 300 pendants made up. Um, she sells them, she does them on, on markets and craft things and she sells them. Um, and I just make a, a, a batch up. So for me, and if you're gonna go into it, doing that sort of thing, then see my, you can use the soft jaws, but the trouble with the soft jaws is what you'll find is every so, after so many, when you've done about five, 600 of these things, this will start to, you'll get little nicks in it because you've gone slightly over and they widen up and once it's gone too big you can't make it smaller again 
So that's the only downside with that, okay, on those. And you've got to buy them. So the best answer is to make yourself wooden ones, okay? Now this, this chuck, I've had this for young. So it's got an extension piece, so, um, a thread adapter to go on here because this is a, a 1.8 TPI which goes on my midi laves. I've got a couple of midi laves, but I'm not using those at the moment. So I've got it on here and it's fine. It's not doing any big work. I don't do bowls with it, even though I've never found it to be out of balance or give me vibration or any problems. Right, this chuck is one of the ones you get them from Rutlands and that. They do these deals. You can get like two chucks for a hundred and something pound or whatever. And they come with all the jaws and they have these little cold jaws in them, okay? And I just screw a piece of wood on the back and then that makes that totally adjustable. I dug these out yesterday because I told you I didn't have the other jaws and stuff. So that makes them adjustable and then they're, they're fantastic. So, because then these, these just go in and tighten up and you've got scope for all different sizes then. So if, uh, if you're gonna get into making a lot of these, it would really be worth you investing in something like like this. These small cold jaws or or they even these chucks. Just get two small chucks and dedicate them just for that. If you're going to be doing a lot of that sort of stuff. That's personally how I, I do it, you know. Um, and the beauty of these is why I would do that over soft jaws. Is because when that does wear out, you just put a new bit of wood on. It doesn't cost you nothing, you know. Um, and what I would do uh, when I'd first start, I'd, I'd go for, because you're not worried about weight, you're only turning pendants, you're not worried about the weight, you're not putting bowls on it. I'd get a nice thick piece of wood, get that on there. Because then when that, that one's gone a little bit, you can just face it off and put fresh on it, and away you go, and you just carry on. And then you just unscrew them, throw it away. You're not putting, I mean, I've, I've chipped my one, I've broken it out, but they're only little screws in the back. You're not holding no weight on it, there's no big bowls, it's not for that. I mean, you can use you use them for your boxes and pots and things like that. You know, when you want to do your little lids, uh, put it back in. Set wooden jaws, fantastic. And it's not not too dear to buy. I mean, a lot of you might be able to get the small cold cold jaws for your chucks or whatever. I don't know what you've got. Um, but yeah, that's the way I would go. But when I've just got half a dozen pendants to turn, then. I don't normally have those jaws on. That, that they'd come off again later. Um, and these, these are fantastic. Okay. Now, uh, who for John? Jonathan Flynn. Right. He did. He jumped in a little <laughs> bit, bit quicker on me and said about I could make some earrings and make a little match set. Well, yeah. I was actually going to discuss that today. How you can do your earrings and use your same chuck. Okay. Great, great minds think alike. <laughs> so. Right. This is just going to show you there, because I've got some earrings here that I, I've done. I, I make the earrings as well. Um, now these ones, pretty much you, you just use your same, your, your pendant size. Don't worry about the off-centre. The, the only reason you want the off-centre chuck is it's not to drill the hole, because can, anyone can drill a hole. Okay, you can do that in the other one. The only reason you really want that off centre is to be able to do this little scoop bit, okay? But on earrings, because they've got to be a lot thinner, because otherwise, you know what's going to happen? Your girlfriend's going down the road, she's going to have elephant ears, aren't she? And who wants to walk down the road with some girl with elephant ears? Yeah. <laughs> Flat, especially if Dumbo. she runs, she'll be flapping like that, and you end up wetting yourself laughing, and that's not good. So, <laughs> you don't want a girlfriend who's got elephant ears, right? So, basically, with the earrings, these are some I've done. I, I do them in the standard one, which I just use for doing the face without the off center. And <clears throat> I drill the holes first. I actually drill these on the on the drill press and do it. That way, when you've turned them, you don't get no fluffy around the holes or anything like that. They're all, they're all nice. It's just the way I do it. It's quick. I can go over there. I can drill a hundred of these uh, in no time. And then I just... Go and do it. Sometimes I'll drill the hole down through the centre of a piece and then I, I part them off and they've already got the holes in and everything. It depends on how you're working, okay? But um, these ones are doing the normal chuck. So uh, these ones, these are just, just like rolling the bead, really. Do those ones, turn it around, do both sides. Little one to go in between, 
That's all fair. If you add that dainty you want to get. Yeah. But and then I just for these ones, as I said, even these, they'd be, uh, unless, you know, if, unless you're going with, out with Pat Butcher, <laughs> so, you know, big earrings like this. Well, it's called fashion, so, darling, fashion. Yeah, fashion. So I've made, I'll, I'll make some small ones as well. I'll make these ones. Okay, these tiny. I ain't got no hooks for these ones. We're out of the yeah. hooks. I need to get some more. And my hands are filthy rotten. Um, I make these small ones. And these match up to the pendant. Okay, so you can buy the pendant. Little earrings. Nice little dainty ones. Ain't going to make her ears all big and baggy. <laughs> so, and I've, I mean, you probably can't see it on the camera. I've put the little little details on them you probably see it, it might show up on that one no you can't really see it there's little details on them and stuff like that yeah. you can do whatever you want but i'm going to show you how you can just do your chuck quickly so you can take those ones okay and make the small earrings to go with those so we're going to pop our chuck on here a bit of our life center we don't want to stab our elbow mm. That hurts, and I know. I know from experience. It hurts. Hurts. <laughs> right. So we put up. Now, elastic bands, because I know some people probably think, oh, I wouldn't want to trust elastic bands to hold it. Hold my wooden. They don't. Okay. Elastic bands on this have one purpose and one purpose only: to stop it falling apart when you take it on and off. Okay. And when you open up to adjust it. If you, when you open up like that, if you didn't have the bands there, that would just all fall off now. It'd all come apart. When you've got your piece in there and you've closed down, you are tightened up on that tenon. That can, that's not coming off, okay? The elastic bands are only to stop it falling apart when you take it off, okay? And, and when you open it up to stop it falling apart. Right, so what we're gonna do now, because we, we have our little recess, Okay, which is to take the dome of our pendant. We've already got a, a little bit of a dibble, but all you have to do, if you want to do the earrings as well. Now, this is another one I have. Okay, this is, a, I found another one of mine. I found an old one that I had. Um, it's got all coloured bands and that. Right, this is one I've used for doing earrings. And if you can see, all we have to do is put another little hole in there. So we just, we've got our little dibbit still which put your divot in first, because you want that to be smooth like that. And then all you'd have to do is put this little center bit in. Okay, so we're gonna do that now. Hopefully I won't mess the size up with this. I've got, I've got a, again, with this, I just get some bits of you. Okay, this is a bit I cut some off of before. Pop that in my chuck, clean it up, and then all you gotta do is slice, just with your parting tool, Get them to your size that you want them, um, okay, and just cut you cut 50 of them off, and that that give you 25 pairs of earrings, okay. So what I'm going to do is just measure, take a measurement, we will cut it, and then we might have to just adjust it as we go, because you want this just to to be just the right fit. It's just got to hold it. If it's uh, you obviously you don't want it too big, but if it's too small and you tighten down, you'll you'll break it. It'll, it'll break. It don't, don't hold up for that much. Right, okay, let's um let's do this and then I'll show you how I go about the the drilling of them. Because obviously you don't you don't need the off centre bit, you're not using a big drill bit for them. They're only earrings, tiny little things. Right, okay, everything's clear, everything's go. I'm going to get a part of the I'm going to want to get my... Oh, look at that. Bang on, first time. <laughs> right, okay, let's see how close we are. Right, that's going to be too small at the moment, so we've got to just take it easy. Once you've got this set, it's set.
It's worth taking your time and getting it right, because once, once you've done it, you ain't got to do it again. It's set for, for this size of, unless, you, of course, you want to change. Right, keep your finger on it, go into expansion mode. Pop it in, right, that's in. Come down, let's just see. Right, no. It's too, too open, so that, that, if I tighten that up, that'll end up breaking it, so I've got to take a, a tiny bit more off, okay? So keep your finger, finger in there, because if you don't put your finger in there, that's what happens, it'll just come off. Okay, so keep your finger in there. Right. We'll just go again, and we just want a fraction more off. You, you don't want it too tight. If don't press it because you will, you'll just break it. There we go. You want it virtually closed right up, and it's it's just got to hold it basically. It's it's, it's only a, such a light piece of wood. Okay. Yep, that's in there. Right, this thing to go. I'm going to use a, to use a smaller spindle gouge, a little quarter inch one, just so I can get get up into that corner there. And that's it. Right, nice and smooth. And now what we do, I know it's a little bit overkill, but we'll put a little, couple of little lines in it. There we are, so now we stop that. Loosen up. Pop it out, turn it round, back in, and finger on, just tighten up. Now, you can, and what I do, if I if I'm making a lot of these, what I would do, just what I would do, is when you're let me find, I've got a piece of wood. Right, I was doing one here, but this, this one's got a bit of bark on it. What I'll do is when I'm turning my bit to turn the earrings, I would actually make the front one side of the earring there, then part that off. Then do the next one, make half the earring, part it off, do that. So then all you've got to do is do one side. So you just put them in and you just do one side of it. You haven't got to do one side, turn it round because you've already done one side before you took it off of here, okay? It's just a way it can speed things up for you, make it easy, so you'll have just a load of earrings done, all half, and then you can change it. Just things to, it's if you want to go into a, like a, a production mode, guys, if you just want to do, a, you know, I mean, you think, right, you guys out there, what a present for your teenage daughters, <laughs> that they would, could you imagine the look on their face when they open their present on like their birthday or something and they've got uh, a pendant and a pair of earrings that you've made for them? <laughs> I mean, do, do, you know, most kids, they just get like an iPhone and things like that. Could you imagine the look on their face? They, they would, it would be a picture, wouldn't it? Just think about it, guys. Yeah. All them teenage girls out there, they'd love this. <laughs> Right, okay. Okay, same with the other ones, when you do your first, first one, 
that will sort of cut your truck and get it all set to where your, your cuts are going to be, okay? Right. So we'll do a couple of little lines on this side as well. Okay. So, now what we would do is we've sanded it. Sand, 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 sand. You missed that bit. You didn't see me do it, did you? <laughs> I didn't cut and edit, honest, I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> right, okay, now what I do from here, uh, knocking things over, let me get my little bits. Right, so this is a little bit overkill for this little thing, but right, this is just a little, I think it's a 2.5 mil drill bit. So before I take it off, I'll just drill my hole in it, okay? So that's, turn it out. Right, so that's that done. Now I'll take that out of there. So expansion mode, keep your finger on it so it don't come off. That'll open it up. Right, we pop that out. So that's our, our earring, okay? That's our chuck done with, so we can, um, take that off and now that's that's done now that's had its adaption that does pendants and earrings okay for those sets whichever you want to do now what I do here because you you can't be putting that in an off center and and chamfering it a lot of time you don't need to okay what it is that hole is is fine if you do want to do a little chamfer in it, what I do is I use one of these stepped bits, okay, like this. Now, it's so thin, don't put it down and try doing it because it, 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 you'll just break it, okay? Now these, these step bits, if you've got any of these, get them out of Lidl's and things like that. You can do, they're not like a, a sharp cut drill bit, okay? Look, you put your finger on there. I don't suggest you put your finger on and drill, but I'm just showing you that it's not gonna slip and go right through your finger or anything like that. They're not that sharp. They are just for show. And all I do is I hold this, let the drill spin quite fast, and just hold it there for a second, okay? For a couple of seconds. Where the hole is, right, yeah. Where the hole is. Don't put too much pressure on it. You just, all you're doing is putting that little chamfer. And if you hold it there for a few few seconds like that, what it will do is it will make it shiny as well. And then put your little drill bit back through just to clean up the hole. And there you go. There's our little earring, okay, with our hole with our little chamfer around it to match up. And that's a nice little, and if you give those, then your you girlfriend, your wife, or your daughter ain't gonna end up with big elephant ear holes, okay? <laughs> yeah, I mean, she might want elephant ear I'm not gonna think against now. No. I have nothing against elephants, okay? <laughs> They're very, they have a purpose. They're very good. I, I like elephants. I've got nothing against elephants. It's just you don't want your girlfriend looking, looking like an one. elephant, do you? Really. Right, anyway, I'll give that to Lisa. Thank you. So that's it, guys. Just a quick update on getting your wood done quick. If you want to do them, like I say, you know, production wise, yeah, if you're looking at, you know, if you've got a, a, an outlet for them, you can sell them at, you know, if you're. If you, you want to sell them off at three quid each or something like that, do them nice and cheap for people. If you do 200 of them, yeah, three quid each. That's quite a bit of money. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing for? <laughs> That's it. You know, it's, it's good. And it's all, everything is free. You use scraps. You can use all your small scrap pieces of wood, get them done. It's not costing you nothing. You haven't paid yeah. nothing out for your chuck, for your jaws, for your bits. There's everything's yeah. there and it's all free. Okay, and there you go, guys. So that was just to help you out. Hope it's helped. I'll see you on the next one. Toodle pip. Bye, guys.